Hi, thanks for tuning in to Gabbing with Girlfriends. And my girlfriend today, who's more like a daughter-in-law than a girlfriend, but she's both, is Carrie Ballag. And I haven't talked to her for ages with text and and natter a little bit. But hi, Carrie, I'm so excited. Hi, Gloria. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Oh, I love you. So oh, oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm so glad you're here. And I don't even know where to begin. So I'm just going to jump in and let's do it. Ask you, well, first I've known Carrie, I don't know how many years, but I've known her husband forever mm -hmm. and they have the two, the most gorgeous boys, two of them, Cash and Christo, who are just adorable and the nicest boys. And it makes me very sad that we don't live closer because they don't know, they don't know me, know me. That's sad. Oh, and you were, you actually came to the hospital when Cash was born. So I you were did. like, this is who he met. <laughs> so I should be kind of a, I can't think of what the word is, but some kind of grandparent of nothing yeah. else. But um, yes. anyway, they're adorable. And thank you. So Carrie did something when her, her first business that she had, when I first met you, was mm -hmm. your... I don't even know what to call it, but that you had in Brooklyn, which was yeah. the most clever, fun thing for kids to do. Will you tell us about it? Yes, absolutely. I think um, when I was pregnant with my second son, you know, I said I had to think about another career. I was in fashion PR and it was just too much, too, um, you know, consuming. So I always wanted to scratch that entrepreneurial itch. And so uh, we came up with the idea of a rock and roll themed uh, play space for kids aged five and under. So we had a uh, 5,000 square foot uh, play space on the waterfront in Williamsburg that we launched in 2012 called Frolic. So it was membership um, based. Uh, we had classes, we had our own kids band, we did concerts for kids, birthday parties, the whole whole thing. So it was, it was an amazing experience and it was really um, community based. A lot of family was moving from the city into Williamsburg. It was still early on at the time and it was, it was an exciting time. It was fun to, to be creative and, and always have, you know, um, something for the kids to rock, do. Exactly. And having rock playing all the time on, on the, you know, speakers, it was really, really a cool, cool, fun uh, experience. It was just so clever. Like when you walked in there, it was just like, nothing I had ever seen before, nothing anybody had ever seen before. It was very innovative. And um, yeah, if you if you weren't born into a musical family, which her kids were, but if you weren't born into a musical family, and even if you don't like music, you mm -hmm. walk in there and you're just like, I don't want to leave. Oh. I loved it. It was just amazing. It was fun. I think we were, um, you know, once you have kids, you, you your choices to hang out with your kids were really like these um, ball crawly, you know, generic uh, cookie cutter yeah. type locations, you know, and Williamsburg had all this exciting talent. We had, you know, film producers and musicians and there was this creative community and we're like, we, you know, we have to kind of take this up a notch uh, to be fun for parents too and, and relate. And uh, it was such a great, um, you know, place to, to meet other parents and just, and just chill while the kids played. And, had fun. So what happened to it when you left? Did it go away or did somebody buy it or? So we, there was a lot of um, construction happening in Williamsburg at the time. So we actually um, licensed it to the Children's Museum of Manhattan. So it, it actually went over there in, in New York and Manhattan and they had an exhibit for uh, a certain period of time and they bought, you know, pretty much bought a lot of our uh, items. And, and so it was a great way to I guess, transition to the next chapter because I was moving to New Jersey to be closer to family. And that way, like thousands of kids were able to enjoy it. We were membership only, you know, it was a little exclusive. So this way it was open to schools and daycares would come and they could all experience the frolic. Brain. What was that? Yeah. So that was really a nice way to segue, you know, segue yeah. out. It was, and of course the kids were getting older. So we were kind of, you know, they were kind of getting past the age and it was time to move on. So, um, yeah. Yes. And now, and now they do music anyway, with, yeah, without yes. it. So they love it. So then you, you moved to New Jersey and you started 
another business. Yeah, I just like, I can't sit still. <laughs> you know, my husband was traveling a lot, as you know. Um, so he was on the road and, um, you know, I was like, what am I going to do next? And my background was PR and marketing. And so I came back and we, you know, settled in Red Bank and I said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do PR and help local businesses. And so I started to do that. And then in 2017, I landed a um, big architecture firm in Manhattan, and that kind of started the evolution to where we are now for Brand Groupies, my company where we do social media and public relations for architecture, engineering, uh, construction, design, and real estate uh, commercial firms in mostly New York and New Jersey. So how did you get, how'd you get the big architecture firm? Like how did that um, even come to be? I actually um, was friends with a, a dad at school and he just bought the company because it was a over a hundred year old company, Mancini Duffy. He just became majority owner and wanted to shake it up. He wanted to just disrupt the industry, do things that, you know, the typical architecture firms weren't doing. And so I started doing their social media and, you know, doing things that I had done in the fashion, in the fashion industry and other industries that were kind of uh, uh, looking forward thinking, more forward thinking. And I was surprised that that industry was was so behind the times with their marketing and, you know, all of their um, <laughs> online touch points. So, you know, basically uh, was doing all of this with a fashion lens. And so it, it made them stand out, you know, at the time. And then we continued to add on PR and podcast management and personal branding for the CEO uh, and president. So, um, so that's, you know, how it started. So how did you grow it? How did one day you had this architecture firm and one day you had a lot more? So how, how does that even happen? That's a good question. <laughs> well, so, so basically I was, I was saying yes to everyone who came my way, you know, restaurants and you know, doctors, and I would do personal branding, social media for all of them. And then what I soon realized is I was still by myself with a lot of freelancers, and I really get excited about collaboration, being creative. I love having a team and um, really uh, creating exciting, you know, ideas, and um, we get so passionate about our clients. So what happened was, you know, after working for Mancini, we would get referrals. So the president would refer us to people and then we would grow that way. And, you know, funny enough, we also uh, launched his podcast called The Anti-Architect. And so we would be coordinating with all the guests and they, you know, actually came to us and they said, hey, I see what you're doing for Christian. We'd love to hire you for your services. And then um, a twist of fate happened when my sister's college roommate moved to the area and she was a big VP for fashion in fashion PR in, in the city for one firm for over 14 years. And she said, I, I really want to work with you. I moved down here. And so we said to Mancini Duffy, we said, hey, we're, we're starting a PR division. What do you think? And they said, great, let's let's go. So we started doing social media and PR and we kind we coined the term so PR because they work so much to get together now. Of and course, social yeah. media people can it's so hard because so many people are, um, think of different things when you say marketing, there's digital marketing, there's SEO, there's PR. And so what we found that by doing so, social media and PR, we were really able to move the needle for the for them and, and fuel business growth. So once we started to do that, we it was basically referrals and just, um, you know, in the industry. And we went all in because we really, really enjoy it. We we love these visionaries. There's, we have some female clients who are doing things in the construction industry that, you know, haven't been done before. And so it's it's exciting for us and we get to be creative. Fashion, we both come from fashion. It was a really tough training ground. I lived in Milan for three years. I We were in it. It was so stressful and cutthroat. So to come into this oh, yeah, industry- they kind of welcome you with open arms. They're kind, you know, um, of course it depends on the client, but they, they kind of let you run with it and you can really be the creative force. Um, whereas in fashion, you might've had like five cooks in the kitchen right. making decisions. Um, so we, we like to work independently and be an extension of their, you know, their marketing department and they can trust us. We're not considered a vendor. We like to be considered more of like a, a partner. So how many people do you have that work with you? 
So there are about five of us on, um, you know, steady, um, steady work and retainers. And then we have also videographers and uh, graphic designers and website developers. So we have our, you know, our um, different arms of marketing that we can tap into when needed. That's so cool. And I know last time I was at your house, I saw your new building and it's in a great area. And you're so lucky. You're lucky to be well, you're terribly creative anyway. Her husband's oh. super creative too. Um, and yeah, you're so lucky to be able to do something that where you can let your creative juices flow and that you love and that's yeah. local. I mean, it takes you five minutes to get to work. And right. I mean, it's brilliant. It's, it's so great to have it all. So having it all, is that tough when you've got two kids or three uh-huh. kids counting Chris? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's that's a good question. You know, people are like, "How do you do it?" I think it's um, it's he, Chris definitely helps. He does, you know, he does the laundry. He does a lot of things in the house that you'd be surprised. And uh, I couldn't do it with, without. I'm so him. jealous. So jealous. <laughs> And then, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I can't complain. So, uh, but he likes doing it. I think he, he does enjoy it, even if he complains. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, now, you know, as, as you know, with your active um, grandkids, it's, it's such a busy time and they're so active in the activities. And, you know, I think it's a lot of the driving now is a lot. And like today they had their physicals. And so I didn't get to the office till 1230. And I kept reminding myself don't be stressed. This is why, you know, you have your company so you can have this flexibility. And I was up till two in the morning. One of the nights this week, I was up till 1.30 AM last night Why? Why? because I work, you know, if I have to catch up on things, I will do it at weird hours. But because I knew this morning I had to get them to the doctors and one to, to work, one to meet a friend for a play date. And that I had to make sure that was priority. And taking care and what, of act, what activities do they do? Um, so now Chris uh, Cash is into uh, Legos. So yeah, he's, he's brilliant. Lego fanatic. We just went to Denmark to the Lego factory, so that was really cool. And um, he's into track, soccer, and piano, so he loves that. And then Christo is all in on soccer. I think after seeing the the World Cup last year, now watching the women's yeah, World yeah. Cup. He is all in and he loves to sing. So he's a, a singer and he does all the musicals. Oh, that's well. so cool. A so singing footballer. I love it. Videos of her, of her singing. Oh, so yeah, good. It's, it's, I mean, it was to be expected that we would have musical kids and grandkids in my, in my um, case, Guy, my grandson. He's all about the Lego too. And he's an amazing pianist. So oh, it's just interesting to watch this. So talented. Because you okay. say, you're like, oh, of course they're going to be musical. But then when they actually are, you're like, yeah. Are. yeah. Like, okay. And, and the fact that they love it and they're so passionate about it too is just really cool. So speaking of musical, let's talk about your band. <laughs> the band. That's the thing I, I really get this. excited about, <laughs> I think. I know, you know, my dad played the guitar, my mom played the piano, but they never taught us music. They my mom, they tried to, t- to get us to do piano lessons and I was a dancer and I said, no, I don't have the patience. And then of course I got in my twenties and I so regretted not learning an instrument. And so um, I was in my, yeah, in my twenties, I started taking guitar lessons when I lived in, in Manhattan and uh, just, you know, <laughs> For two years, I would take my guitar, go down on the bus to the East Village to some random Craigslist guitar teacher. And then um, and you live to tell the tale. That's I know, better. right? I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, it was insane. But I was um, really excited about learning it. And, uh, and then when we moved here, I was 40 and we took the kids to music lessons Um at a great school called Lake House Music Academy in Asbury Park, New Jersey, where the Stone Pony is and you know, you know it well. And so all the moms were sitting around and I had, and one mom, I we lived in the same building in Williamsburg, Renee. She was taking bass. You know her then? I did. So I knew oh. her in Williamsburg. And then we ran into each other on the ferry and we're like, oh my God, you live, you know, locally. And so 
the owner said, hey, you know, we do these adult music sessions. You guys should start a mom band. Like it was the biggest joke. We thought this was the funniest thing ever. And he's like, I got, you know, I have a, a mom who's taking drum lessons. I have another mom, you know, this was all beginners taking keys. So he's like, show up Wednesday night, just, just come. We, you know, I'm gonna get you all together. So we all show up, we're all nervous. <laughs> You know, it was the only prerequisite is you had to be a mom. You had to be a mom. That's it. You didn't have to know an instrument. They would teach you three chords and then you're like playing a song. Perfect. Um, so I I have to say, we we I think we played uh zombie, right? Zombie, the cranberries, is that it? Zombie. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was only a few chords, and by the end of that night, we're like, oh my gosh, we're actually playing a song together. I had never experienced that in my entire life. And um, it was like magical. So we said, okay, we're going to sign up, you know, and we continued to go every single week to this music school. And then you would perform at the local venues. We, we did play at the Stone Pony, the Wonder Bar, different venues in Asbury, kind of like the little recitals. And it was a really cool program. And then we just decided after three years to go off on our own and started playing gigs. And if you had told me that I'd be playing like gigs on stage, like playing guitar, I would have said you were crazy. <laughs> oh my um, God. It was, it's really been an amazing fun outlet. And everybody's still the same members? Have you thrown anybody? Have you lost anybody? We have, yes, there's been different singers, different, you know, uh, people, keyboardists throughout. Um, and I think just life comes up and I think we of just, course. we still have, um, uh, three of the founding members are still a part of it. And have the kids seen you? Um, so they have, but now they're like, they don't want to come. Over it. They don't care. <laughs> they're like, Oh mom, I've seen it. I love I, it. That's so fun. That is so oh. fun. I wish I knew how to play an instrument. I can't even sing happy birthday. So. Oh my gosh. Well, it's um, never too late. It's never. Oh no, <laughs> definitely <laughs> is. Um, so um, tell me, I was going to ask you something too. So I saw you, I saw you in Utah when you guys went skiing. And then yeah. this year you went to Colorado. Is that right? Yes. This year we went to Snowmass, but I know we got to see you the year before. We want to come back and. And, and visit. I want you to come back. Come visit yes. before school starts. Beautiful. It's so no, beautiful. serious. And come visit before school starts because people say in Utah you go for the winter, but you stay for the summer because there's lakes and boats oh. and it's just so beautiful. Sure. I'm serious. I'm going to text you oh, about this you. because okay, text you. Yeah, I mean, um, it's so beautiful. So, what is the next exciting thing that you have going on? So the next exciting thing, let's see. Do you have a trip um, planned? That's so cool that you went to Denmark. Weren't you were in England as well, right? Yes, we just figured we went to uh, flew into London, then went to Billund, uh, Denmark, for the Lego um, factory and or the Lego house, and then we went to Barcelona. Just because once you're over there, it's just so it easy well, to. Yeah, and I think we overlapped. I saw you had an awesome yeah, trip. We did. There. Um, grand, your granddaughter, right? Yeah. Did you, was that your first time in Barcelona? So I had been there when Chris was on tour, we did stop in Barcelona. So we did go uh, once before, but I didn't spend a lot of time uh, there in the past. And this time it was really, it was really cool. It was uh, neat uh, to, to bring the kids and, and I've never been. Yeah. I've all never been. Stuff. And it's really interesting because now that Terry's retired, all he wants to do is travel because his whole life he yeah. spent time at a venue and at a hotel, venue, hotel, venue, hotel. He's never gone sightseeing. And it's um, it's just oh like God. a whole, whole new world for him. I know, I know. And you were just in Egypt, right? We or were, we were oh in Egypt gosh. and Israel. How was and, that? Oh my God, it was just unbelievable. We, I think we did Israel at the right time because oh. I don't think it's, it's quite hectic now, I think. but. Mm -hmm. It was just the most spiritual. I can't even tell you. It was it was pretty awesome. And when we did Egypt. We went to the pyramids. And it was like, I tell everybody, it was the best thing I've ever done and the worst thing I've ever done. We went to the pyramids and it was just breathtaking and the Sphinx. And it was just yes. like, it literally took your breath away. And then we decided to go inside the pyramid. 
Yeah. which was the worst thing I've ever done. It was like so oh, tiny and so claustrophobic and you had a oh bend over and walk. And it was just 300 degrees and I oh. thought I was going to die. I couldn't get oh. out quickly enough. Gosh. Yeah. I mean, oh. if you don't have claustrophobia, you do get, <laughs> You suddenly develop. Wow. Hideous. Hideous. Oh like, my gosh. So, so do you have anything on your bucket list that you want to do that you've never done? You know, I've never been to Greece. So... That's that is on my that is on my list. I almost we almost went on our honeymoon, but we ended up going to Costa Rica. Chris surprised me because I wanted to go someplace he had never been, like what place that right. was new to the both of us. And he's been so many places, so you know it was uh, uh, slim pickings. But um, it was that's yeah. I think that's on on the list. I that's know, a good one. Yeah, that would be fun. And I think just, um, he's renovating our kitchen. So it's been a while. So I'm hoping we can, uh, focus okay. on that fun to that oven isn't still in the corner. Is it? No, it finally <laughs> <got in. laughs> that's been in. Okay. It arrived and yes, the oven's here. And then it sat there, you know, for a year and a half, but then he got so busy with work. So I'm like, I can't complain. And he, he enjoys doing it himself. So we're of lucky, course. you know, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he, he great with his hands. Do you know, I'm not going to dwell on this, so I'll move straight into something else. But speaking of your honeymoon, do you know whenever I kind of play that game, if I could do my life all over again, what would I do differently? Mm. I wish I was at your wedding. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, I so do. But Uh, anyway, that makes me sad. So I'm going to change subjects. Um, But but I'm glad I'm glad you're getting a kitchen. We're we're actually renovating ours in England, and oh. I'm not going back till it's done. I'm oh. excited about it, but I'm staying gone because we're spending more time in England now that James has a baby. Yes, I and know. um, yeah, she's just so, divine. Um, she's what's really her name again? Clara. Clara. We would say Clara. Yes. Being English, there it's Clara. That is. And so and at first, when she was amazing. first born, every time I'd say Clara. Yeah, I would say that's the same as calling her another name. That's not her name. Her name is Clara. So it's, it's I've got to remember that. But I, I'm good. I'm so, good now with it. So excited for for him. That's uh, really yeah, exciting. Me too. The cousins were excited to have a uh, cousin. So excited! It's so excited. Um, oh. And to see James as a dad, I never yeah. thought I'd see it. So it's really special. Oh, that's really, really exciting. Oh, I know we kept waiting for the news. We were like, we hear, you know, any day. So that's um, awesome. That's really. So what else? What else? What else? Okay. So I have a little quiz thing that I sometimes remember to do, and it'll be a fun one to do it with. So the first question I'm going to ask you, I think it's really hard, and I wouldn't be able to answer it. So don't worry if you can't, because yeah. I could never do it. So do you have a favorite motto or inspirational quote that you want to share? Well, it's a, yeah, it's a good question. You know, I, I have two. My mom. You do. I have one. <laughs> Go on. I'm going to steal one of yours. I think, well, my mom always said it and I, I don't know who, who originally said it, but the only consistent thing in life is change. So that was one that I always think about as, you know, oh, I like being, that go up and down and you just know, you know, things are going to go in different directions. So I always try to think about that. And then there is a rock one that we use at at brand groupies that um, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. And supposedly Mick Jagger said that because, you know, we try to um, follow that, that mantra in business because coming from fashion Every single th- thing we did was just over the top. You know, you had to go above and beyond. And we're finding that a lot of people don't go above and beyond. So if you just go a little bit more, you know, it's an incredible how you can stand out, have your clients stand out. And if you're going to do it, you just go do big. Yeah. You know? Go for it. You go, oh, yeah. you go big. So um, I like that one too. Overdo oh, yeah. it. Those were two good ones. Well, here, I, I prefaced it by saying you probably won't know any and you have to really no, no, no. We use it a lot. Like we used it in a, a social post. And so we, you know, we put it on candles and we gave to clients and we just resonated because of the groupies, you know, the play That's on so words. Cool. I always say be the, you know, Mick Jagger of your industry, no matter what it is, even if it's boring or, you know, um, not as exciting or sexy, you know, make it, make it sexy, make it stand out in your own Can way. Can you believe he's 80? 
What did you say? Oh, oh, I know. I can't believe it. And Chris's dad turned 80. Yeah. On the day before. I can't believe it. It's what is, you know, his secret. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, God knows. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Oh, um, God. I mean, we play a 40 minute show and I'm like out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> like running on the stage. I'm like, oh my God. Oh yeah. I've got to come. I have to come see one of those live see, I know. Uh, see, um, videos, but I need to come see it live. So before I before your next quiz question, yes. here's a question: Do um, do boys want to see the Barbie movie? You know they don't have my boys don't have interest. I feel like once it comes on t you know online uh, on TV, they'll see it. Um, Cash did see the op Oppenheimer. Is that it, Oppenheimer? We did. Uh, he did. Yes, this the the opening day and. Uh, he, yeah, I know. I did you see it? No. Oh, okay. No. I know. He just didn't. I don't know. I'm um, sure he didn't watch it. Yeah. I mean, Lena went to see it. I don't know that guy would go, but I'm sure if it's on TV and he has three sisters, he's going to have no choice but watching it <laughs> over and over and over again. But I yeah, I wondered, if, I wondered if boys cared. I know. Hmm. Um, they've seen stuff, you know, on TikTok and things like that about it, but, um, they're more into the, uh, you know, this, the Marvel movies and the Spider-Man, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Next quiz question. What's your favorite drink? It could either be alcohol or not. Oh, let's see. It's hmm. a good question. I, I love my coffee. My sister owns a coffee company so i'm addicted to that but i think me too. Yeah, like my last drink would probably be coffee um i started drinking kava like plant botanicals mixed with seltzer it's not alcoholic and it kind of gives you the, you know that? it's it's called kava this uh i think the brand is called feel free and it's like this little concentration of kava which is like a plant botanical or something you mix it you mix a little bit with seltzer and it just kind of chills you out and it's not alcoholic. So I don't have a hangover the next day. Cause I, I can't drink like I, you know, I have in the past, <laughs> like I love a margarita, you know, a margarita or something, but one uh, or a dirty martini, but I'm a, I say, I'm like, OMG, one martini girl. I'm that's it. I'm done. And then it's like, I'm good for a week or two because I just can't function like I used to. So yeah. yeah I've never, I've never heard, heard of Kava. What? Yeah, I didn't hear of it either. I just literally, two friends told me about it simultaneously. So I was like, oh, let me look into this brand called Feel Free. And um, I ordered it. So it's, you know, it's kind of like, you feel like you're sipping something. It tastes a little medicinal at first, but it's like planty. And then you can sweeten it up with a, uh, like a seltzer, like a flavored seltzer. And, you know, you wake up feeling great. So I still don't even understand what matcha I don't is. Even I don't know. I don't get it. I know. I is know. it caffeinated matcha or not? Um, oh, so kava is, I should even look it up. I know. I don't, not that I know of. Huh. I know. I'll send you the link. Okay. Yeah. Um, free. Feel well, free. Well, if it's not caffeinated, I probably won't drink it. But I know. Um, and it mustn't be caffeinated because you said it relaxes you. Yeah, kind of like feels like you're chill, but nothing too extreme because it's, you know, I'm sensitive. So can you can drink just... coffee before bed? No, I mean, I but I know people that can, I don't get it. That blows me away. I can't, I always want an espresso. I always want to try an espresso martini, but I can never do it because I don't want it in the morning and I don't want it at night. Yeah. That so, definitely sounds like an 11 AM drink to me. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I want to try that one day. But um, yeah, I can't drink coffee after three or I'll do like a decaf cold brew. Like there's like this, oh, oh, sorry, no. decaf cold brew, but it's, you know. I don't like the flavor of coffee. So if I'm not getting caffeinated, I'm not drinking it. No. I don't, get it. I, I don't, I don't like coffee flavored ice cream or yeah. coffee flavored chocolates, nothing. I just like no. caffeine. That's it. Just caffeine. Yep. That makes sense. Um, okay. If yep. you're an animal, what would you be and why? Oh, these are good questions. <laughs> no. Let's see. If I, um, I don't know. So I feel like maybe a bird. Um, I don't know. So I could fly and travel 
and be That's like be free. Go, you know, go wherever. Or a seagull near the water. I love the water and the ocean. So oh, yeah, that's good. Oh. That's good. Yeah. Are you binge watching anything at the moment? Um, let's see. I what did I just I just saw the Wham documentary. I love music documentaries, and that's like really all I like to watch. I was I was watching and just like that, the sec, you know, Sex in the City. Um, no, I've never seen a Sex in the City in my life. No, yeah, I I don't know. I got it. I was trying to get into because it, it was like at the time when I was living in New York. You know, I was always like the you know, it was a time when Carrie was was uh, popular, but I just I couldn't get into. It. I watched two episodes of the second season, and I kind of am like, eh, not sure if I want to continue. But um, but the Wham, I love the Wham documentary. I, lo I love the Wham. I'm going to have to watch that. Yes, it was cool. So now I've been like playing it nonstop in the I'm house. I'm going to have to watch that. Did you watch Succession? No, but I should. I know. I Listen. feel like I'm so busy. To, like you see me, I'm working at night. Like I never sit. I had no yeah. desire to watch it. I don't know why. I think because everybody was already on to season two and I just. Yeah, I know. And so when I didn't start it, I sat, Terry and I both sat there and watched all of it within a week. Come it was on. so great. Okay. So well, great. I'm going to put that on my list and maybe we'll make yeah, Chris watch it. It was really good. Okay. Last question. What is your number one pet peeve? Oh, God. you could do two if you want. Okay. I, <laughs> this is so silly. I was a journalism <laughs> major and like grammar really gets me. So like when people spell sneak peek with P E A K, it's really P E E K. <laughs> Just no, no, it, I'm with you. I was, it drives me crazy. I was an English major, so I'm totally oh, with you. I, yeah. And I'm not to say I'm the perfect writer. Like I still have, I'm like, oh, I don't know how to say like, you know, and I and me or, you know, things like that. Little things like that, because we would, we would fail if we had one like letter misspelled or one, you know, wrong punctuation. Um, so I'm a little obsessive about that, but I know it's such a changed world now. People just know, know, um, you know, punctuation and, you, you know, because of texting. texting, everybody wants to make it instead of yeah. where are you with W R U or I don't exactly. know, I D K or whatever it even is. I know. But I know. Yeah. You know, it's not, um, but so I still all correct people. Even if I don't know them well, I can't help yeah, it. Just I one know. of those. So I try not to like wallow in that, but the other thing that, you know, I don't complain a lot on social media, but uh, I guess I would like to say, <laughs> Flaky people. No, I just, I respect people's time and plans. And I just, um, you know, sometimes if people don't give you that reciprocation, it's like, okay, one time you're late, that's fine. The next time this came up and then if you, oh, you forgot the call, it's like, I'm done. <laughs> it's like, I just, you know, I, res I try to respect people's time. So I think- Me too. I'm like that with yeah. anything. You know, I like I actually fell out with, one of my dearest friends for a oh, hundred years really? over time. She was oh. late for everything and I just couldn't do it. I don't know why she thought her time was more valuable than my time. I know. And I'm late, you know, sometimes by a few minutes, I think it's, yeah, it's just some, uh, but like excessive, you know, and consistent. But you uh, say you're going to be late or if you're all yes, of a sudden well, you're on your way to a restaurant and your like, GPS exactly. tells you you're still seven minutes away. You quickly yes. text seven minutes. Yes. Um, but the worst is yeah. being in California, being in Los Angeles, yes. and somebody turns up late. Oh, my God, I didn't know there'd be so much traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, live in L.A. Mm -hmm. oh, what did you think? I know. I know. And you allow for that. You allow yes. those extra 10 minutes or, you know, yes. that makes me crazy. Don't use that excuse. I get it if you're visiting yes. L.A. and you really don't get it. Yeah, that's fine. But if you live there and you use traffic it as an excuse, I just want to strangle you. It's I know. Awful. I know. And if so you said this to Chris, he'd be like, oh, my God, you're always late. But I <laughs> but it's more like the, you know, like the like the people that text that like, oh, let's do it here. Oh, this came up. Can we do it here? There's like like 10 texts, like change, 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 change. I'm like, all right, let's it's not worth your time or it's not as yeah, good, yeah. It's not a priority if I'm not yeah. a it's not a priority. I'll give. If give, it takes give, this give. long to figure it out, yeah, it worth it. I yeah. know. 
So I hope that's all right. Totally there. Because <laughs> I give, I always give people the benefit of the doubt. I trust. I don't have to gain trust. It's almost like I trust until you let me down. I'll trust you from day one. I'll give, 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 give. And then if they just, you know, I'll give like three chances and then I'm like, that's then a, I like, well, that's three strikes and you're out. Yes. That's it. I get it. Very nice. But um, so, yeah, so there it is. Well, this was really fun. Oh, um, thank I'm you. trying to think if I have anything else to ask, but I'm dying to text you to talk about I you know. coming to visit. But um, I know, I know we, we, you know, love to get it on the calendar. And I would uh, love, love, love that. I know. And I know. I'm trying to think. And what I need advance is. warning for your Halloween thing, too, by the yeah. way. Yes. So if you kind You're of right. know that date, pass it my way, please. Okay. October date. That would be amazing. And I think that's it. I think I think I've picked your brain enough for today. <laughs> we'll have to do a part two so we can come up with more questions. <laughs> I want to ask you ex all these questions. <laughs> I know it was about me, but. Um, okay, well, that's what we'll do next time. We'll, yes. Aww. We'll do it re reciprocally. Yes. That's the right word. Um, thank you, thank Carrie. You. This was so nice. I'm so excited to to see you and speak to you. you it's, too. We kind of forget to do these things when you text, when you have. I know. I know. You know it's, it's like, oh, it's nice to see you, but it'll be nicer to see you in person too. Yes, absolutely. I know. So, and we just pick up like where we left off, but of course, what we, we do all the time, and you know, really need to make a point of making a plan. Yes, so. we do. Anyway. Um, well, thank, thank you so much for, for coming on. And Got it. Um, thank you for having me. This thanks so much for tuning in today. And be sure to follow Gabbing with Girlfriends on here so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on social media for more fun and in-depth conversations. Thank you.